Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Before we start today's event, I would like to remind you to always turn your microphone off during this event. And you can turn your camera on if there is no trouble, then put the virtual background, which are given by our committee before. Uh, from then, from here on, please let me to open this event. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Everybody, everyone. First of all, let's praise our God, Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the creator and sustainer of the universe. Peace be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, blessed be singer of Allah who has guided human life from the destruction into the right way. In this opportunity, we are delighted to welcome you in today's event, guest lecturer, editor in chief of Food Chemistry in conjunction with Pharmacy Webinar Series Nine, with the title "Publishing a World Class Scientific Paper: What Does the Editor Expect from the Authors." And my name is Benedicia Rosiacha, and it is an awesome and prestigious change for me to be the master of ceremony in this event on Monday, November 21st, 2020, and participants. Uh, welcome to our main speaker, Honorable Dr. Paul Finglas, Editor-in-Chief Food Chemistry. Hello, Dr. Finglas. Hello, good, good morning. Hi. Hello. Oh, good. Good afternoon in in Indonesian time. <laughs> okay, Asian time. Yeah, sure. And also welcome. Yeah. Also welcome to our moderator, Honorable Doctor Nancy Dewi Juliana. Good afternoon, Doctor Nancy. Hi. Good afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you all as well. And let, but not least, welcome to all our participants, our highest appreciation, and thank you for joining this event. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start our uh, agenda for today, let us pray to the Almighty God based on our belief. Uh, pray begin. Okay, thank you very much for your kind words. Um, and thanks very much for inviting me to, to speak today. Um, okay. This is a sort of uh, talk that we give from time to time in different countries. Um, we've, we've done it several times. Um, so it's a, it's a good opportunity to um, talk you through the journals, um, what we require, and also a little bit about how you would structure your, your manuscript. So I, I will talk about the food chemistry journals, um, a little bit about El Silvia scholarly publishing, um, how you would select a journal, uh, writing your article, um, the, the peer review process, um, and then say a little bit about um, publishing ethics and, and different types of, well, two main types of publishing models as well um, towards the end. So this, this is me. Um, I, I've been with Food Chemistry as an editor since 1995. Um, the journal was established um, in 1974. Um, since then, it's, it's, it's really expanded. Um, Food Chemistry X was launched um, a couple of years ago. Um, and it's, it's very similar to Food Chemistry, except that it's, uh, it's an open access journal. Um, and that's that's the, the, the main difference. Um, so I'm, I'm a research scientist um, in food nutrition. Uh, I'm based at uh, Quadrum Institute uh, in UK. Um, and I also am managing director of UF, uh, um Association, uh, non-profit association, which is based in, in Belgium. Um, and your uh, main interest is around food information, particularly uh, food data. So that's me. Um, if we just introduce the, we've actually got four related uh, journals in the food chemistry family. So if I just go through those, um, food chemistry, launched 1976, sorry, not, not 1974. Um, it's grown to impact factor 9.231 um, in the last citations, which, which is really good. 
um, food, food, food journals are notoriously have low impact journals. Um, so to have a, have a have a journal at nearly ten is 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 quite uh, quite excellent, um, and it's in the top five, I think, of the the food science journals. Uh, the second journal is is Food Chemistry X. Um, as I said, it's an it's the open access journal of food chemistry, um, and it's already grown to impact factor six point four three three in in three years. Which again is 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 quite uh, quite excellent. Um, and then the other two journals that we have um, that we that we've created um, in the last few years. So the third one is Food Chemistry, Molecular Sciences. Um, that hopefully will have a impact factor in 2023. Um, and this is more about um, uh, sort of I would say biological. Uh, data, biological ways, uh, biological methods, um, DNA type methods, um, or antibody type methods. Um, and it has a little bit more um, biochemistry and, and, and nutrition. Um, if we move on to the third journal, um, and that is Food Chemistry Advances, um, that was launched in in 2021 um, again that's open access um, and that doesn't have an impact factor at the moment um, and again it, it, it's similar to food chemistry for chemistry x but it has a slightly lower threshold for um, submission of manuscripts um, so they're they're the four journals um, and again i'm chief editor of two of them uh, Dr. Sean Ashley edits the third one, and Dong Zhao, Sun Waterhouse from uh, New Zealand, is the editor in chief of the last one. Um, so, if we move on to to the food chemistry team, um, in addition to myself, uh, we have three senior editors: Demetrius from University of Reading, UK; Daniel. Um, Daniel Granato, University of Limerick, and Dong Zhao um, from South China University. Um, and alongside myself and the three senior editors, we will be um, uh, reviewing and triaging submitted manuscripts before they get assigned to editors or they get um, rejected or transferred to other journals. Um, and then in addition, in addition to that, we have um, around 25 editors and associate editors um, to deal with quite large, uh, large volumes of, of manuscripts that we have, have coming through, um, including um, at the moment, I would say we're upwards of, we'll probably go through 10,000 manuscripts this year, which, which is a huge number. Um, we just break through that, I think, by, by the end of December. Uh, so if you want to find out more about the journal, you can go to um, the URL web link here, sciencedirect.com journal food chemistry, and you have all the information there. So just to move on a little bit to the, the scope of food chemistry, um, it's, a, it's mainly around advancement of the chemistry and biochemistry of foods together with analytical methods and process, processes that are used to, to measure components in food. Um, and they should focus really on, on novelty of the research um, or method to development validation. Um, and again, we would expect the, the analytical methods to be applied to a number of foods um, and validated against other reference methods. And we don't generally accept papers around uh, botanicals, plants, and and herbs. So that that is one of the um, common problems we have with authors. They continually to to submit manuscripts around those particular components, but it's it's really food that's at the focus of our our attention. Um, to, to go down a little bit more um, in, into the main 
sections. Uh, so we're dealing with major and minor components of food, their nutritional, <coughs> excuse me, theological and, and sensory flavor and microbiological aspects. We're dealing with bioactive compounds of food, including um, antioxidants and phytochemicals. Um, not sure why botanicals is mentioned there, but it, it's mainly phytochemicals, um, things like polyphenols um, and other non-nutrient compounds that have a health um, benefit. Um, and again, the, the, the data presented must have a, a discussion to demonstrate um, relevance to food or, and or food chemistry. That, that's really important. You can't just submit papers with data on its own. It needs to be put into context. Um, so as we move down, we have chemical um, and biochemical composition and structure changes um, in molecules and components induced by processing distribution and domestic conditions. Things like uh, browning, um, how that affects the carbohydrate sugars, etc. Um, we have effects of processing, composition, quality, and safety of foods, other bio-based materials, um, byproducts, and and processing waste streams as well, as long as they're related to food. Um, and then lastly, it's uh, chemistry of food additives, contaminants, and other agrochemicals, together with their metabolism, toxicology, and food fate. So again, we we do have some uh, food safety papers. Um, but we don't really accept papers around surveillance that there's probably better uh, journals that can take those. Um, okay, so if, if we move on. Um, so these are papers that are out of scope, which, which is always um, quite important to, um, to say. We, we don't accept papers that are purely clinical or engineering without contribution to, to the chemistry, um, pharmaceutical or non-food herbal remedies, traditional or folk medicines, um, as I said earlier, and also survey surveillance data. Um, again, outside scope. Um, research advancing theory of practice of molecular sciences of food, um, cure prevention of human diseases, again, uh, um, outside scope um, and papers on therape therapeutic application to food components isolated for treatment, cure, prevention, of human diseases, again, would, would not be accepted. Um, you need to look more at nutritional um, journals or clinical journals for, for those sorts of papers. Just check. Oh. Out of scope. Okay, so um, before you accept, uh, before you submit a paper to to any journal, um, you really do need to check the aims and scope of that journal. Um, you should also look carefully at the guide for authors. Make sure you're preparing manuscripts that meet the guide for authors. Um, you should always make sure. The text is written in good English. Um, you, you can actually get some help with um, improving the English requirements. Um, there's an English language editing service um, available from El Sevier, but also from other um, offer, offerings in, that, that you can find on the internet. Uh, manuscript text is divided in, into different sections. Um, we usually ask for line and page numbers um, and the text can be double spaced. That, that just helps its readability um, and it makes reviewing by um, reviewers a lot easier to, to handle. Um, number five is an ethical statement. If you're submitting manuscripts that have experiments involving humans or, or animals, uh, on the animal side, you know, we always would expect a, a statement on how um, animals were slaughtered um, and obviously need to be slaughtered in, in, in a, an ethically based way. Uh, that's quite important. 
uh, any conflict of interest statement um, can be included at the end of the manuscript. Uh, we normally re restrict the numbers of figures, figures and tables to a total of six, but you can have additional tables as supplementary material in the online version. So again, you don't necessarily need to stick to six. What I would say, um, oh, sorry, I've just gone. What I would say is always make sure that you don't have too many tables and figures um, and they, they need to add to what's written in the text. They shouldn't, they shouldn't replicate what's in the text, but they should add value to what's written in the text. So again, supplementary material is useful, but only if it adds value to the manuscript. We don't want table after table of repetitive information. Um, so you need to include your, your references, uh, peer-reviewed articles, websites, etc., uh, in the reference list. Uh, normally a covering letter, introducing new article and explaining particularly the novelty of, of the research that you've done or the, the novelty of the method that you're developing and validating. Um, you can highlight, identify important outcomes of your work um, and make sure that uh, you can have three to five bullet points showing the the, the most significant findings and there's a limit on the number of characters. So that, that's a useful checklist for you to go through before you even submit your, your manuscript. Uh, where are we now? Submission checklist. Okay. So um, I won't say too much about Elsevier because you probably already know they're one of the um, top international um, publishers um, in, in terms of, of scientific and other, other areas. Uh, it had, you know, they just to look at some of the facts, two million articles, submissions, half a million published articles, 23,000 editors, 87,000 editorial boards and, and 1 million reviewers. So it's a, it's a pretty enormous um, undertaking in terms of, of publication. It, all, it also, you know, you look at journals, books, um, and other articles. So it's the facts are are, are fairly um, fairly substantial there. Okay, so so let's go on to to, to choosing the right journal, um, and and this is something that is often overlooked by authors. Um, they just they just want to publish, you know, to the highest impact journal um, and they don't pay enough attention to their manuscript and and where the best journal would be for readership so you need to think about your your audience um, like for food chemistry it's definitely around foods chemistry of foods um, if it was um, you know more clinical you would look more at clinical nutrition journals or other types of journal you need to check very carefully if your research is in scope. Um, we, we do get inquiries from authors from time to time asking if their, their paper is in spec. Um, most of the time, the papers that we see are out of spec. They're clearly out of spec. They're on something totally different, um, either on medicine or um, clinical nutrition or, or disease prevention. So again, it's, it's really a waste of your time, waste of our time, if you're submitting papers that are, are not in scope. Um, you need to think about the peer review process and it's useful to submit um, three or four potential referees. You know, there shouldn't be referees that you have a, um, a research collaboration with. Um, they should be independent uh, referees that you know in the field that could be uh, able to, to review your paper. Uh, again, you should talk to your, your supervisor, supervisor and colleagues and discuss, again, what would be the best journal um, for your piece of work. 
Uh, you need to look at your reference list. And again, sometimes that's quite useful for identifying potential reviewers that have also published in your area. Um, you need to look at impact metrics of the journal. Um, it, it's very nice to publish in, in high impact journals, but every author will not have high impact manuscripts all the time. There might be a lesser um, impact manuscript. So you might need to look at you know, a lower journal in, in the food area. Um, you need to have a look at the editorial board to see whether there are scientists, researchers on there that, that you know of that cover your, your area. Um, there's also a, um, a committee on publication ethics um, that oversees publication in, in the scientific literature. Um, and they, they set out some, some uh, useful guidelines for the ethics of um, publishing what to do and what not to do. So again, it's very useful to, to look at those, those guidelines. Um, three major things here in choosing the journal. You should only choose one journal for submitting your, your manuscript. Um, you need to make sure all the authors are in, in agreement, which is very important. Uh, and they agree to the final version of the manuscript. Um, and then you need to check the journal website to, to make sure your manuscript has been prepared in the correct way. So writing your, your article. You have figures and tables. You have your methods, your results and your discussion conclusions. conclusions are then your introduction. So you, first of all, you need to get your, your data together. Um, then it's a good idea to, to, to think about the results. Then you should start think, putting your methods together, your discussion of the results. Um, and you can write your introduction um, once, once you've got the bulk of your paper together. And then you need to identify some, some key conclusions as well. And then title, abstract, keywords are also quite important. Um, we don't want a long title. You know, it needs to be succinct um, and cover the, the main as aspects of the paper. Um, the abstracts are limited in terms of number of words, but again, they should cover the, the main aspects of the paper, um, a little bit of background, why the work was needed, what was done, few key methods um, and you know your major results and findings um, and that needs to be in a in a in a way in a word limit so again that that is quite important and a few key words at the end of the abstract okay so preparing your article um, editors, reviewers, and readers want well-presented manuscripts with the aims and the scope of their journals. So, you know, presenting a well-thought-through manuscript can help the editors, and it can also help the reviewers, and it can put reviewers in, 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 a, in, in a good mood when they look for your manuscript, and they can find the logical and they can understand it. What's very frustrating is if manuscripts are prepared poorly, um, the English is not so good. And when you look at that, and when you, if you were to send it to reviewers, you know, reviewers are gonna be not very happy looking, looking through and providing comments. So always try and keep the editors and the reviewers happy. And there's a few steps here for, for that approach. So you need to follow the guide for authors. Um, you need to set your manuscript out logically, check the English is okay, give it to a, um, a native English speaker to look at. If it's a research paper, then make sure your, your hypothesis or what you're trying to test is in the last section of your introduction. 
two or three lines. What, what's your hypothesis? You know, and how are you addressing it in the paper? Uh, you should also look at presenting a short summary of the main drivers um, behind your research. Um, do not over, you know, overfill the introduction. It should be a short summary of what's gone before and, and why you're doing what you're doing now. And then come back to your, your hypothesis in the discussion and conclusions. So you link, you try and link the two. Um, you can either combine your results and discussion into one section, or you could have a separate results discussion sections. It depends, you know, what you would, what you prefer, both, both are possible. Um, you should not speculate be beyond what the results can support. You can say a little bit in the discussion about what's missing or what the future work might be, but you should stick to the discussion of the results and what they show. That, that's really important. Um, have a look at your approach, um, the work you've done, and, and look for flaws and what you might have done differently. And then sometimes you can, you can bring those into the discussion. Um, if I had more samples, um, or if I had used this method, or you know, I'd sampled at different points of, of the process or whatever. Just just, you know, it's important to say that might help explain, you know, missing data or data with too much variation, et cetera. Um, so as I said, include your future work in the conclusions. Uh, avoid too much judgment about the impact of the work. Try and make it the manuscript informative and interesting. Um, and then always avoid, um, abbreviations are okay, but make sure you, you put the, the first time you mention the abbreviation, you need to give the full, um, the full wording um, and try and evolve too much of jargon. Again, might be, un, you know, um, might be difficult for reviewers or editor to understand particular words. So try and avoid the jargon. So we're now moving on to submitting your article. Um, so you have a clear letter stating the, the novelty of the research or the novelty of the method you're, you're working on. Um, some keywords, so some highlights, again, um, you can have a graphical abstract, which is, is sometimes quite nice to see, um, where you present your, your, your results, your findings in a graphical way. Um, abstract, state briefly the purpose of the research as well as the principal results and major conclusions. References, check the journal style. You know, if it's numbering, use numbering. If it's alphabetical order, use alphabetical order. And also check the, um, the style of the references. Journals do differ. Um, and it's very infuriating if you get a manuscript with references set out, but in the wrong format, you know. Conclusions are important. Um, and you should try and answer what you set out to test in your hypothesis. We don't want to see a summary of the results again. Um, and again, visual, visual information helps readability of the manuscript. Um, tables and figures, you know, is, are important, but they need to be used very carefully. Sometimes a table is, is a good way of presenting results rather than writing it in, in the text. So think about your tables and figures. Um, and they need to be eligible as well. Some, sometimes, you know, they're too small. Um, and you can't see particularly graphs. So check that it's, they're all up to, up to, you know, up to the quality that you would want to submit. Okay, so moving on to the peer review stage. And this sometimes can, can confuse um, or irritate authors. 
um, and you need to work with the journals to best get a review of your manuscript and a positive outcome. So the peer review is set up to determine the quality, the validity and significance of originality of your research or your analytical method. So the peer review process, um, the author submits the manuscript to the journal. So in the case of food chemistry, um, we have a journal office that would initially check um, things like English um, and length of article, you know, and whether in scope. Um, so at that stage, some manuscripts might be rejected. Most of them come through to the, the editor, the senior editors and myself, and we will then screen um, the manuscripts in terms of the technical and the scientific quality of the manuscript. Is it worth sending for peer review? Um, and I, I would say for food chemistry, because we receive such a large number of manuscripts, we might reject 40 or 50% of submissions coming into the journal You know, at this stage it's not uncommon for us to, 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 to reject that number. So I'll come back to, to rejection later, but let, let's go on down the, the central line. So the editor then, then selects at least two reviewers. Um, one of them could be from the reviewers that you've suggested. Um, the other one will be you know, found from our um, reviewing database. Um, in order to get two reviewers, we might have to send the manuscript to five or six reviewers, you know, so that's why sometimes there is a delay. Um, it's the challenge of finding two, two good reviewers, um, although sometimes we, we might end up with three or four reports. We're looking for a minimum of two, um, so that, that's really important, and that takes, sometimes takes time. We, we do it as quickly as we can. Um, Sometimes, though, you know, reviewers don't reply, they decline, and we have to invite more reviewers to get to that, that too. So once we get the, uh, the reviewers' reports back, we would then look at the, the reviews um, and, and see whether or not the manuscript can be revised, in which case it goes back to the author. And it may go back to the author one or two times, depending on the, the degree of comments that have, have been made. Um, we, we try to do that again as quickly as possible, but you're, you're normally given a couple of weeks to send it back. Editors would then look at it. And then again, it might go back to the reviewers for a second opinion, or it might be decision can be made by the editor. So that can go you know, this two or three times, maybe this way. So if at that stage, the editor decides that the manuscript cannot be accepted, it's just not salvable, either because there's major flaws, the science wasn't good, um, or there were some discrepancies or whatever. And that's, that would be made on the basis of the reviewers' reports. If both reviewers said reject, then the manuscript would probably be rejected. If one said reject and one said major revision, then depending on the, the editor, it, it might go back to the author with major revision, but with, with a note to say that they must address the reviewer that said reject. You must address those reasons very carefully. We try and be fair, but on the other hand, we, we don't want to accept manuscripts that that are just poor. Um, so once the, once the editor's happy, the manuscript is accepted, the article gets published, or it's rejected, um, it, it can be offered to other journals, and then it's entirely up to the um, author, author if they accept that redirection or not. Um, I would say in the last few years, um, authors are probably not so willing to accept um, redirection to other journals. You know, it's quite a low percentage will 
maybe 20 percent of authors would would you know would would reject that and look to revise the manuscript for for, for another journal themselves or do extra work and improve the, the journal um at this initial screening phase stage here where an author where an article is rejected again it can be it can be um suggested that it gets sent to other journals that are are more in scope for the for, for the manuscript you know you, you've just picked the wrong journal so at that stage you you might get rejected but you would be offered um other journals that you could submit your your manuscript to so that's a possibility okay so moving on okay so we're now at the reviewing stage um so there's a number of things that the reviewer will look for they will have another look at the english make sure it's clear and concise um a lot of reviewers are, are non-english speaking themselves so again they might struggle with some manuscripts um even even though we think the english is all right so just just pay attention to that they'll look at the title and make sure it reflects the contents of the manuscript um they'll look at the abstract see whether it summarizes the work uh, they'll look at the methodology make sure it's appropriate it's been explained and all the details are there so the study could be repeated it will look at the figures and tables make sure that they're needed um, they shouldn't be condensed or combined or even omitted um, and then particularly they will look at the discussion and see whether or not that reflects the results that have been made and then they will look at the conclusions um, and, and check the references. So, so normally that you would get back um, a pretty reasonable report um, and they might pick up on one or more of those items um, and give some critique, um, which you should not take personally. It's a critique of the work, not yourself. So that's a really important, don't, don't get, offended by what they write you know we make sure that it that it's focused and it's clear and it, it, it's fair you know we're trying to make um the manuscripts better so they can be published um and then in the revision uh options um we, if it's a major revision, um, we're saying that the manuscript could be published in the journal, but it needs some significant improvements. Uh, these must be corrected before it can be accepted. Um, it can involve textual modifications and additional experiments, in which case you would have to do some extra work um, and produce some extra data. That's sometimes the case. Um, a minor revision is saying that the manuscript is worth publishing and there's a few elements that need to be corrected or improved. You might need some reshortening, some restructuring um, or some, some parts of the manuscript might be expanded. There might be some textual adaptations for the figures or the tables. What's important to remember, minor revision does not guarantee you're going to get acceptance. It's often accepted, but there may well be points that need to be readdressed either by the reviewers or the editor at that stage. But you're, you're getting closest, closer to the point of getting your, your manuscript accepted. So in terms of, of revising your manuscript, um what you need to remember is you need to make this process easily understood by the editor and the reviewer so the more you can do to explain what you've done in the revision the better chance you're going to get this published so usually you should take each of the reviewer's comments and write your response 
after each comment of what you've done to address that point. It's very infuriating if, if you get an author that just says, see manuscript, <laughs> you know, that takes time for the editor and for the reviewer. So you need to write a few lines on what you've done to address that point. Um, you need to state specifically what changes you've made, include the page numbers, line numbers, et cetera. Don't use statements like comment accepted, discussion change accordingly, because we need to see what you've done in a very clear, quick way. Um, you can also provide a, a scientific response to the comments. And you can add, if you don't agree with a comment scientifically, you can provide an appropriate rebuttal to that comment. But it must be factual and it must be based on the science or the technology you used or whatever. You need to, be, you need to reduce your argument why that comment is, is not fair or is incorrect. Um, and again, you need to write it in a way that your responses can be forwarded to the reviewer without changing. So you don't want to criticize the reviewer necessarily. You want to make sure that um, whatever goes back to him, he's, he's not going to take offense at. So try and keep it factual, address the comments, changes you've done, um, and then hopefully the editor and the reviewer will be positive and the manuscript will get accepted. So just to look at a few reasons for rejection, um, it's just out of scope. It's the wrong journal. Um, again, you can use the Elsevier journal finder there for looking at um, more suitable journals. Um, if it's really badly formatted um, and it just doesn't follow the suggested structure, um, it can be rejected outright or it can be sent back to you to rewrite. You know, if the language is bad and you just cannot ex understand it, again, it can be rejected straight away. Um, if the methods, results and conclusions are just not well presented or implemented, um, again, there's, there's some deficiencies or things that have not been done very well or there's gaps, et cetera. Um, the lack of novelty is, is sometimes quite a difficult thing to make a decision on, you know, because we, we, are, we are editors, are researchers, scientists, but we might not be expert in, in all different areas. So again, um, if it happens to be in your, the editors or area of science that you can make a decision on the lack of novelty, then, then, then we will. Um, you can always go to a lower impact factor journal, try, try, try your luck there. Um, but you need to, to really identify what your manuscript is in terms of novelty, originality. And to do that, you need to be aware of the scientific literature, the international scientific literature, and what, what's, ha what's happening in your field, what's been published, what's really new. That's really important to do your homework there and make sure you can identify um, a novelty originality for your, for your work. Um, we don't normally accept resubmission of rejected papers. So once they're rejected, that's it. You, you need to find another journal. Um, occasionally, we, we might um, rescind the rejection and give you an opportunity to do a, a major revision. For reasons, there could be different reasons. Um, you know, I normally get involved if if an author um, complains that the edit, the handling editor or the reviewer has been unfair. So I, I normally act as a sort of arbitrator of those cases, and some of them do get rescinded and sent back for for major revision, but uh, not not very frequently, I would say. Um, after peer review and resubmission, you know, you can also be rejected. 
if you don't provide an appropriate response to the reviewer's comments, you know, we do not agree is not an appropriate response. You need to explain why you don't agree scientifically or technically. Um, you need to uh, explain to the editor and also the reviewers um, not addressing the issue in the manuscript. You know, you need to make sure you address the issue that's been raised in the manuscript. Um, if you don't address all the reviewers' comments, again, the manuscript will come back and you will have to address them all. So again, there'll be delays um, to the timetable. Okay. Um, so just to move on a little bit towards the end of my talk, um, we need to talk about publishing ethics because it can be a problem. Um, unethical behavior by researchers really de degrades the scientific record and the reputation of the science um, and the journal. So we have ways of, of checking that within the journal. Um, we have software that looks at um, duplication of manuscripts. If a manuscript has been published and you come along and submit a very similar paper, then we will see quite clearly it will have a high cross, uh, cross check result. Um, it can also be resubmitting a rejected manuscript when we've already said it's rejected. Um, I think more serious is scientific miscontact, contact, where results are forced, are forced to far, uh, or you have enhancement of data um, or images as well. You're, you're, you're taking images that don't exist um, and you're manipulating or you're copying images from other papers. You know, and again, we, we, can, we can generally pick some of those up. Um, I don't think we pick all of it up, but we do pick up an increasing amount, number of cases. Um, in terms of the publication misconduct, then, as I said, there's, there's plagiarism where you just copy word by word significant amounts of text from other published articles. Again, the software will pick that up. Um, as I said, there's duplication of papers where you would submit to more than one journal at the same time. And again, this, we, can, we can check that. We do talk to other journals, not just Elsevier journals, but other publishers. So we, we sometimes have a conversation with another editor that we've had the same papers submitted and generally both manuscripts would be rejected at that time. Uh, as I said, duplicate publication is where we, we get a high um, cross-check score of a duplicated manus manuscript, you know, and that, that can be a problem. Um, we have authorship issues from time to time. Uh, either authors complain that they've not been included, although they've made a significant contribution to the work, and they haven't been included, and then we would investigate with, with the corresponding author of the manuscript. Um, we would sometimes have complaints that authors have been included and they haven't actually done any work on the manuscript. And again, we would investigate. Uh, you sometimes have conflict of interests where one author, you know, doesn't want the manuscript published, whereas the other authors do. So again, there's, there's conflicts that need to get resolved. Um, there's also a practice called uh, self-citation, where authors would uh, include a lot of their own publications. Um, so those then would get cited, and then they would obviously then lead to an increase in the author's um, citations and H index and things. That is generally unethical. You might want to cite one of your papers, you know, for, for a good reason. But where you see five or six papers being, being included, 
then that really is is a no no. Um, it can probably happen more in in uh, in reviews than research papers. So we we would actually ask then the author to remove lots of those papers. So that's important to to realise. Um, Another thing that's important is, is that the, the first author has a responsibility to conduct and supervise the data analysis uh, and the presentation of the results in the paper. So that's their, that's their role. Um, the co-authors are there to make intellectual contributions to the data analysis and contribution around data interpretation and also helping to write the paper. So if, if co-authors don't do that, then you have to ask yourself, should they be a co-author or not? Um, and then we also, you know, we come across issues around ghost authors or gift authors, um, where authors are added to manuscripts when they have done no work at all from the manuscript. Or, or authors invent author, the corresponding author would invent authors that don't exist. You know, there's a few instances of that. So, you know, just to be aware of those, those things. We, we, you know, we, we pick up quite a few, but we don't always pick up everything. But I think increasingly we're looking to try and um, eliminate those sorts of practices. Uh, authorship is, is important. Uh, there are guidelines on how to ex how to include authors. They should substantially contribute to the conception, design, acquisition of data, analysis, interpretation. Uh, they should help draft the article and revise it. Uh, give their approval for the final full version, and be accountable for aspects of the work, um, ensuring the accuracy and integrity of any of the experiments we've done. So all four conditions should be fulfilled for an author, you know. So it's really important you, you make sure your authors, your co-authors would meet those um, criteria. You may want to add um, others that help you with the work as under acknowledgements where you can acknowledge individual uh, colleagues, collaborators, and also funding body, you know, funding of the work, et cetera, is, is, is also important. So you would do that under acknowledgements. Got about five minutes left. Okay, so just, just quickly saying a little bit about uh, publishing models, you know, this, this traditional subscription model um, where authors publish free and institutions or individuals subscribe to journals is what we've had over the last few you know few decades i would say open access um is becoming more um popular but again the author um or the funding agency needs to pay a publication free and then the article is made freely available to all online um some journals publish exclusively open access like for chemistry x other subscription journals would also offer open access. Um, I would say in Europe now, um, the European Union um, funding of research projects, um, there's a criteria now that all publications need to be open access um, in order to meet fair data rules. So in a big project, you have lots of papers, they all need to be published open access. Um, and if you don't do that, then you can't, include the papers as part of the results of the project. So it is important, but also challenging because you need to find a way to, to pay for the publication fees. Okay, so there is a, um, an author resources on the Elsevier website, which helps you with getting your papers published and answering questions. Um, and you can go online and have a look at anything there. Um, I'm very happy to, to follow up with any questions now if we have time, or we can we can do that by, by email if you want to collect questions up. 
but thank you very much. Um, and I think we have a few minutes for, for questions. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Powell, for such comprehensive uh, presentation. Thank you so much. So, uh, because I think we have one question in the chat room. We have question from Lydia. Why cited our publication is not ethics? Sorry, why is your, why is? Why, ci cite, why citing our own publication is not ethic? Right. In the, in the chat room. Okay, so it, it's not ethical because you are providing a citation to your own work. And if you do that all the time, and you do that by citing lots of your papers, then your, your self H, H index or something is, go, is going to increase. So that's considered to be unethical. All right, so you can, okay. you Unless can include if one, you can include one of your papers maybe, but you shouldn't cite only the... You can cite other papers on the, on the same topic, but, but not yours. I think, I think that's the message. That's not always clear to, to authors, but you know, it is important. Um, we also have some um, editors um, they don't remain editors for very long, but some editors will encourage the submission of papers to their own journal, you know, which again is, is unethical, you know, it's up to the author to decide where they publish. Okay, okay, thank you for the answer. Uh, is there still any question from the students, please? I, I know food chemistry oh. is, is quite yeah. popular in, in Malaysia. In um, Indonesia as well. <laughs> but we, you know, we don't we don't get so many papers from Malaysia as we do oh. from China. Um, China's the biggest um, submitter, I would say, at the moment. But other Asian countries, uh, Thailand, South Korea, uh, Malaysia, you know, they're they're becoming more more popular with with those. There's, there's countries. How about Indonesia? How yes, about yeah, Indonesia? not not so many, not so many. I would say, okay. um, and again, we we would be very happy to 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 increase the numbers. Um, we we try and on on the editorial board, and mm. also the editors, we try and cover the different regions of the world. So we we have some Asian um, editorial board members. Uh, Australasia area as well, but um, sometimes that helps to encourage the submission. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Paul, I also have a question. Uh, in food chemistry, you have two types of submission, right? Open access and the traditional one. Yes, so, uh, that's correct. How, yeah, so how about the acceptance possibility are both uh, equal? I mean, do we have a bigger chance to get accepted if we choose open access? Oh, no. uh, not necessarily. Okay. We, we use the same editors and editorial board and reviewers as food chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea that both journals would be a, a similar standard. Um, but if you particularly want to have an open access paper, then, then food chemistry X would, would be the one. Okay, yeah. Because yeah, the, the open access fee is quite high. <laughs> for yes, yeah. yeah. For yeah. And, we, and we have the same challenge in, in uh, UK and Europe. Um, I, I get in my own, own organization, I, I get money for one or two open access papers a year mm. from, from, from the organization or from the funding body. Yeah. So you, you need to you know, push the university and whoever funds you to, to give you more funding to do at least one open access paper a year. Yeah, yeah. this is also to answer a question from Fatima. So Fatima, food chemistry still has a subscription option, yeah, for the submission. Yes, so not all yeah. Our right. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Okay, still question from the students? Because uh, I think Dr. Paul is very busy. Okay, we have one more. Is it okay, Dr. Paul? Yes, fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, okay, Asrawati, I think about self citation is already answered by Paul, yeah, previously. Okay, so let's go to Henry. What are usually the biggest factors of rejection for articles originating from Asian countries, including from Indonesia? Uh, that's that's a good question. Uh, I would I would say the papers are, are either out of scope or borderline. Mm. That's one one reason. Um, maybe the English is not so good. Yeah, you know, that, <laughs> yes. I, I, I understand yes. that that's yes. difficult. Um, and then the third one I would say is the. The, the novelty originality mm. is is it really novel or original based on other published works so you know do your homework if you want to publish a manuscript then make sure it it, it does advance the science or the method you know that that's really important you yeah. need to look at the international literature and make sure you're advancing what you're doing in your paper they're the three things I think that you, you can, you know, take home, I would say, take home message. So actually reading a lot yeah, about other papers. Yeah. To our study is very important, yeah, Paul? Yeah, yeah, putting it in context, put it, putting your work in context with other work yeah. and making sure that you're actually really doing something original <laughs> or novel. Yeah. Okay. Do you still have some time or? Yes, yeah, 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 I have yeah. a few minutes. Okay, please, other questions? Lydia, is that mean that we may not write our uh, Lydia? This, at least she is the one who asked about the self-citation. Is that mean that we may not write our name in reference at all? <laughs> well, I think you could, you could if, if it was justifiable, you could include one of your papers. Yeah. You know, but, but I wouldn't expect to see six or seven papers yeah so if it, it, it adds it adds nothing to the manuscript and it's also poor ethics um, you need to find other papers that are um, that you can cite that are not yours mm -hmm. yeah also if because sometimes it happened to us that the editor give a immediate rejection but then he suggested to transfer to other journal. Uh, what do you think? Shall we take this option or or, or what? Is it better? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. As I said to you, the um, that option is not so. Po I would say about twenty percent maybe take that option. Mm -hmm. um, it it doesn't mean it's going to be accepted by the other journal, although. The, the other journal, if it's an Elsevier journal, then then it would it would it would receive your your reviewers' comments already. Mm -hmm. So you know it may not have to go out to review again. Okay. The, ed the editor might come back to you and say, "Can you change this, this, and this?" Mm -hmm. So there 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 was a possibility that it, it might be published more quickly rather than starting afresh. Yeah. But sometimes they suggest to the paid journal. <laughs> That's also the yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know. I know. I know. So that, that again is a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Still. So we 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 have. Um, I was going to say, food chemistry X is open access. So if if paying is a problem, then you could also look at you know uh, advances in food chemistry. You know, which which is anyway. a lesser lesser journal. Um, and it's got a it's got a slightly more wide scope, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's worth looking at. Okay, uh, is there still any question from the audience? Please ask. Yeah, we have Paul here. Very rare occasion, yeah, <laughs> to have such big names in our webinar. So please ask. No, no more questions. Okay, so I think no question anymore. Dr. Paul, thank you so much for your time. I know you are busy, but really, really, I didn't expect that you answer my email immediately. So it's such an honor <laughs> to have you here. No, no, it's, it's <laughs> my, you, my pleasure. So so I, really, I really hope we see more papers from Indonesia. We try, we try our best. <laughs> okay, Good. so thank before, you so much. Before we end, 
this oh wait wait we're done we're done oh still one question is that okay Paul? yes fine yeah so we're done want you to explain more about the ghost author yeah um ghost authors don't don't exist you know a, a, a paper has got a number of authors on um and then when you check the authors you know we can't find them so we use this term ghost author um so you know it may or may not be um an issue for the the corresponding author needs to be very careful in in, in you know doing that practice or you know we have had occasions where an author the corresponding author puts another author on the paper and submits it and the other author doesn't know anything about it you know which is also you know unethical so you need to talk you know if, if you're a postdoc or a phd um you would normally talk to your supervisor and they would advise you you know what what to do um but uh, just just be careful you know i'm not saying you that practice is uh, widespread um in indonesia but uh, we we do see it in in some asian countries yeah i think it's clear yeah we're done thank okay. you one more is there any kind of suggestion in regard to the website of juna in food science that not to take long to accept our manuscript uh what was the first part of that question is was uh, which journal is uh what is that the timeline is not too long yeah yeah that that is a that has been a problem with with food chemistry um mainly because the number of papers we've been receiving um and the time it takes to handle those you know um we've, we've taken on more editors this year we will take on more editors next year uh, at the moment, it's about, I think, 25 weeks on average mm -hmm. for a paper for a paper to go to go through 20 to 25 weeks. So you're, you're looking at, you know, five, five months, you know, it sometimes goes quicker than that. Um, but if you want a paper published for your your PhD mm -hmm. um, or whatever, then my, my advice is start early, you know. Yeah. Give yourself, at least, give yourself at least six months um, to get it published before you need it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I always plan. Say. Plan, okay. plan well. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Okay, thank you for the answer. Okay, do you still have some questions? No? Nobody want to speak directly? <laughs> Okay, they prefer to write. Okay, so I think we don't have any more questions. Uh, Paul, before we end the session, so I think the committee have something like a token appreciation for you. And they want to show you here. Please, uh, Praboyo, yeah? Uh, could you please show the token of appreciation here for Dr. Paul before we end the sessions? Yeah, uh, Beneficia? Yeah. Yeah, Beneficia, please. Okay, thank you very much, for Dr. Nancy. Langsung aja, uh, ya. Yeah. Langsung saja, jadi. Yeah. So, Praboyo and Ayu, please, you can give the certificate. So, they prepare the certificate for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. you can send it by, by email. Yeah. Send it by yeah, yeah, sure, email. Sure. I, I will. I will send. I will thank, send you. thank you very much. Um, just, just last thing for, for me. Oh, sorry, sorry for the noise. Yeah, it's a bit of noise. Um, I, I'll be at the uh, International Congress of Nutrition, of Nutrition in Tokyo in, in a couple of weeks' time. Mm -hmm. um, so if any of you are there, just, just come and say hello. Oh, sure, sure. When will it be? Uh, it's the it's about the third or fourth of December. Oh, or, or about a, okay. About a week, so, yeah. So, if, if any of you are there, just just come and say hello. Sure. If somebody, some of us uh, go there, I will let you know. Yeah. But but I I, I will not go <laughs> because no, I have no, to, it, 
<laughs> ya, oke. Okay. Have to change, uh, yes. Ya, ini Praboyo, uh, apa sertifikatnya ada? Do you have the certificate, Praboyo? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, so please. And they also want to have a picture with you, Dr. Paul. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, sure. Um, How do you want to do that? Yeah, I think you can uh, close your share screen for now, I think. Oh, yeah, sorry, I've so got we can my see the audience. Uh, I don't think I have it stop share. Okay, sorry. Yeah, ah, there you yeah, go. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. This is the certificate that they. Please. Yes. Oh, no, lovely. No, no, this is for me. <laughs> for for Doctor Paul from Boyo, please. <laughs> yeah, they also have for you. Yeah, here, here. This is for you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Doctor Paul. Thank you very much. Great pleasure to have you here. Okay. Thanks, so, I will send you two emails. So now we can have a picture together, please. Yes. Stop. Yep. The screen. Uh, there are 85 students here. Okay. And, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So we have several pages. <laughs> okay. Who will take a picture, Prabhuya? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I will count down. Okay. So you can count. Yeah. In three, two, one. Cheese. <laughs> And the second, please wait. Second page. In three, two, one. Third page. How many pages are there? <laughs> uh, four. Okay, last one. Wow, they are so enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> And the last page. Uh, three, two. One. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so this is the end of our session. So thank you again to Dr. Paul Finglas, um, also to everyone who are here now to attend this seminar. So let us close this webinar by Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So good day, Paul. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mr. Paul.